Hello and welcome to Narrowboat Chef. Today would normally be a recipe vlog, but today we're not doing a normal recipe vlog. We're doing a kitchen video. <laughs> we're still in the kitchen, <laughs> but we thought we would talk a little bit about our narrowboat kitchen and how it differs from a kitchen on land in a normal house mm. and things that we find difficult about the kitchen now things or, we like about the kitchen yeah, things we like about it just answer some few a few questions about yeah just answer a few the, commenter questions about the kitchens yeah so so i'd say let's get cooking usually but let's get vlogging <laughs> I love you. I <laughs> love you too. <laughs> so this is our kitchen on our narrowboat. This is where we do all our recipe vlogs out of. Surprisingly enough on a narrowboat this is actually quite a big kitchen. <laughs> Not a lot of storage space but a lot of bench space. I find it quite easy working in this space. It's got a good workflow to it. A lot of galley kitchens have good workflow, I believe, especially in commercial kitchens, coming from commercial kitchens. I do wish we had a little bit more storage space as opposed to bench space, because even though <laughs> I say it's a beautifully big kitchen on a narrow boat, it is actually, we've got a little bit too much bench space. We've got, surprisingly enough, bench space we don't actually use regularly. And we usually just divide it like the right hand side here is all our cooking area and general workflow is from up where we do my prep area on the left hand side of the cook stove. Then I do the cooking on the stove top or in the oven. And then generally while that's cooking I can clean up and we can plate over there. And this is more of like my added ingredients after I've prepped them while I'm cooking. I put them usually here. I've got my wee collection of oils and seasonings and my herbs and my tools and everything up here. I mean obviously as I've said we need more storage. I mean we've got all the storage underneath but when you've got kitchen equipment, cutlery, crockery, cleaning, supplies, we really only got an under bench storage for our dry foods and obviously our fridge which isn't really enough. We've even bought baskets to put all my herbs and extra herbs and spices and bits and pieces so they're easier accessible. I um, mean our future plans are to build up some war units with more shelves and more drawers and that in them. We don't have too many appliances in the kitchen. It's mainly the two we have out here on the bench, the rice cooker, which Maggie wants me to get rid of, but I refuse to because I <laughs> love the rice cooker. You're just lazy. I know I can do it in a pot. We do have a microwave, but to be honest, we really don't use it. I mean, we got it when we first moved onto the boat and went into the marina. If we were on mains, we used it a little bit more often, but most of the time I just find it easier reheating stuff in a pot or a pan and most of the time when we're using leftovers we usually make something different out of them so they just reheat the same meal like we turn the stews into pies and that anyway so I'm really considering maybe just getting rid of this at the moment it's just used for storage as you can see so I'll have teas, extra herbs, Milo, hot chocolate and I put the eggs up and that up here that's all we really use that for the other appliances we have, we have a food processor, which I keep down here, it's just a wee one, and that's about all our appliances, we just have the, really the three. Oh, and the stick blender, we have a stick blender as well, but that doesn't take up any space, it doesn't really use that much energy, it's just down in here. One of the things that I, um, you probably noticed that we have our large pot and some of our pans out, um, unfortunately because of the lack of storage space some of the bigger items often just get left out on empty bench space where we have it often use these I can put these ones away my pans but since I'm using them two or three times a day often I'll just have them out use it scrub it off leave it there to dry and then just pop it back onto the stove top to use in an hour or two anyway oh and the kettle always stays out 
you don't know when you will have the hankering for a cup of tea. So it has to be on call 24 <laughs> seven. <laughs> so when we moved on to the narrowboat, if you've seen our tour of our narrowboat video, you'll know that we mentioned we didn't actually need to downsize that much because having moved from Australia mm. not very many years previously or prior to that, we already didn't have a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah. So it was the same for our kitchen. We didn't have to get rid of really anything that I can think of. No. We left, we obviously couldn't bring our fridge freezer, freezer. thing that was like this big. We did leave that behind and now we've got our we tiny um, little fridge freezer, freezer, which did take us a little while to get used to because yeah. we do we do tend to make bigger batches of stuff and freeze yeah. it down and like or especially when we were working it was just a bit of a hassle to do a full meal when we were in and out of yeah, the we, house and we, pr we prefer to like batch our recipes so that we have extra for another meal yeah and when you got limited sort of fridge space we're a lot more careful about how much we do make and when we go shopping we have to be more conscious of how much sort of like frozen stuff we're buying because yeah. It's we not can't buy like four boxes of ice creams because yeah. it won't fit in the freezer. It, it's not too difficult now to downsize our shopping because we obviously do a lot of the shopping on the bikes. And if we There's can't bring it on There's only so much you can <laughs> put back on a bike and bring back. So If it doesn't fit on the bike, it's not going to fit on the boat. So. <laughs> Pretty much. So when we take the bikes to go shopping, we usually go for a big shop twice a month yeah twice a month like every two, two weeks. weeks um usually when there's an aldi or a little somewhere nearby we'll yeah. get the bikes out they are electric bikes so yeah. it does make it a lot easier <laughs> it'd be quite difficult pedaling back with the amount of shopping we get on those two week shops That's you just got to take advantage whenever there's an aldi or a little yeah nearby. we do a big shop at an aldi or a little because they're a bit cheaper mm. and we will do like occasional shops at tesco's or sainsbury's or any Whatever's of the biggest, closest. Any of the bigger ones that have the stuff that Aldi doesn't sell. Like yeah. our like soy creams and our rice that milk. And Aldi doesn't sell those, so we have to go to yeah. Tesco's or um, Well Tesco's. obviously we always stick our nose into the little like the little farm shops and that whenever Yeah, see. the farm shops are really cool to go and check out and see what they've got and mm. yeah. So in regards to coming from a normal kitchen to a narrowboat kitchen is there anything that you miss about a normal kitchen normal normal um not so much miss about going from a normal kitchen to a narrowboat kitchen because it's the narrowboat is pretty much the same as a normal kitchen that's what i was gonna say yeah. like it's we like, say, like narrowboat chef and everything and like cooking in small spaces but to be honest we do have a fairly big kitchen and mm. it's got everything that a normal kitchen has anyway. I've worked in hotel kitchens that are smaller than this. <laughs> so I would say there's nothing that I miss no. about. So yeah, I would say that I miss my um, decent ovens, but that's not so much a difference from the narrow boat to a normal kitchen. It's just we don't have a good oven on Ours the boat at the moment. Old. <laughs> kind of needs to be updated we we need to update the kitchen in a few ways i mean we're quite eager to start that whenever we've got a bit of time and a bit of cash to do so i mean yeah we want to replace the stove top with something a little bit more trendy <laughs> a little bit more trendy i mean the l one works great but something that looks a bit nicer and we also want an oven that's not part of the same unit so we can then mount it at about chest height so it's a little bit easier to get those heavier things in and out yeah. of so one of the things that Especially when we're filming our cooking vlogs. There's a boat going past us right now. And you can hear it, and that's not a problem. It's a mm. fairly unobtrusive noise of the engine. But some people might think that while cooking, a boat going past will make you rocking quite difficult. But a boat's going past quite now, what, right now. And... We get like a slight movement in the boat, but it doesn't no. rock wildly around. No. They aren't generally they aren't going past fast enough to cause any like wake or anything so no. it's not not an issue no it's not an issue at all really 
So with our food vlogs and our recipes, we always try to aim to make recipes and film the recipes that are easy to cook, easy ingredients to source, um, that doesn't use a lot of equipment, that can be cooked within a relatively easy time without a huge amount of prep or having to store a large amount of ingredients. Because we are lazy and <laughs> <laughs> the simpler the better. Yes, yeah, so our recipes are focused on being simple, easy for small spaces and small quantities yeah. um so we always try to include those little bits and pieces from that we've learned from our careers as yeah. chefs in top tips top tips basically yeah without like blasting you in the face top tip top <laughs> tip <laughs> <laughs> yeah but if you would like a top tips video just pop in the comments <laughs> <laughs> and we'll do a chef tips video We'll do like a whole like mini course of this is how you cut an onion and this is how you <laughs> brunoir a carrot. <laughs> we would call it Narrowboat Chef Masterclass. <laughs> yeah. Hit, yeah. Comment below if you want the Narrowboat <laughs> Chef Masterclass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so putting aside masterclasses, we do have a cookbook in the works. And well, technically, we had a couple of cookbooks in the work because yeah. the first one took so long, it was no longer the season it was aimed to come out at. We were working <laughs> on a summer one, but <laughs> summer is about halfway over by now, and by the time we get it out, it won't be. So, we are now working partly on the summer one, partly on like the winter autumn one, which yeah. we're hoping to get out this year for that season. Yeah, so uh, our immediate plans are the, the cold weather recipe book and then we'll do the hot weather recipe book and then somewhere down the line we're going to do a regional cookbook where we do food from regions that along, the along the canals. discovered along the canals. Yeah. So we're, we're looking forward to doing that. And yeah. We're definitely storing up the photos and the footage for the the, the, the um, regional one. <laughs> yeah. So we thought for the end of this video we would just answer a few of the really common questions that we get most on our channel and the first one is are we qualified chefs? Yes. yes. <laughs> we were trained and qualified in Australia. We went to college for so many weeks of the year, year and yes. Yeah, so did the whole three four year apprenticeship program yeah. in Australia. Yeah we were apprentices and then we became chefs so it's a little bit different the way it works in Australia to what it works over here. Mm. Um, we but yes the... we are we have certificates we worked in commercial kitchens we are qualified chefs. I'm a, I'm a bit more qualified a bit more experienced. experienced. I've got about uh, 12 years as a qualified chef and about 13 14 years in kitchens whereas for me I did my three-year apprenticeship and then I've probably spent about in total another two to three years yeah as a qualified chef out of yeah out of my apprenticeship so it gives so, you about five to six years of experience in the kitchen yeah so not as much so Ryan does most of the cooking mm. full stop like even outside of our videos yeah. Ryan does most of the cooking yeah <laughs> are we our experience is really broad too because we've um we've done fine dining hotels pubs taverns yeah we've done a bit of everything a bit of everything so I tend to do more of the sweet stuff though because she's much better at it I have a sweet tooth <laughs> that is the answer we are qualified chefs just. Uh, another question we've had is like, will we ever like open our own restaurant? No, never, <laughs> never. So opening your own restaurant is a lot of hard work. Mm. There's generally not a lot of money in it. Yeah, the profit margins are quite small. It's usually about 5%, 5 to 10%. A being a chef is a really stressful job as well, which is why mm. we got out of it. We, we enjoy cooking for ourselves and like showing other people like our tips and our recipes. Mm. But in a commercial setting, it's completely different, yeah. and we wouldn't. We've like even it. even thought about doing like maybe a little pop up kitchen off the boat, but even then, it's it's a lot of it's hard a lot work. of work as well as having to manage it on top of cooking and everything. As and well. then there'd be all the like regulations we have to make sure we're following for our mm. own like boat and kitchen. So we moved yeah. onto the boat for a stress free life. <laughs> Stop asking us to get more stressful. <laughs> We're making these videos so that you can make them. <laughs> <laughs> so the answer to will we open a restaurant? No. No. 
So that's our galley chat. I <laughs> uh, hope you've enjoyed watching it and I hope this has answered some of your questions about how easy it is to cook on a narrow boat, um, how we do our recipes on our narrow boat. If anybody comes up with new que questions, just pop them in the comments. Yeah, if we haven't answered a question and you're really dying to know, <laughs> then yeah, just pop it in the, in the comments because we do try to read them all and answer all of them. And if we do get enough questions, even anything not related yeah, not to related kitchens, to cooking. just narrow boat life in general, yeah. we might do another sort Q. of like a, an actual Q&A video. Yeah, that'd be good. So if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up, give us a like, and if you didn't like it, obviously thumbs down. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. <laughs> and it tells us what you do like and what, what you don't, don't like. like. So. It, it's all useful <laughs> feedback. Yeah, that's right. And don't forget to subscribe. If you haven't already. If you haven't already. <laughs> Again, <laughs> why are they not subscribed already? I know, I don't <laughs> know. Yeah, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. You can start it up and I'll put my three cents in. <laughs> three cents? Yeah. I wasn't going to give you one cent. Oh, oh, be like that then. <laughs>